So in this video I'm going to show you how I made this rabbit, this clay rabbit. Uh, the body and the lid of the rabbit are made using coil technique that you would use if you were making just a standard coil pot. So uh, just to start off as you can see I rolled out a slab of clay and then cut it with a needle tool roughly into the shape of the base of the rabbit itself and then transfer it onto a, um, a wooden bat so that you can move the rabbit around when you're storing it between sessions. Um, make some clay coils and then compress the base using a rubber rib and then you have to score and slip the edge of the clay slab and also the, the coil itself so that you can stick the clay coil onto the base um, and it's important that you do that because otherwise the uh, the clay coil won't stick properly to the the clay and when you fire it it'll just come apart so once you have slipped and scored the clay and the coil and you've compressed them together then you have to blend in the clay coil to the to the base and you can do this either on the inside or the outside or on both but either way you it's a good idea to do it on one side just because it gives it that additional strength and stops it from just um, coming apart as I say when it's dried and firing um, so I tend to blend it in first of all with a wooden tool and then use my fingers just to smooth it off once the clay has been properly blended in so I'm doing it on the inside of the pot and I also do it on the outside because I want the outside of the rabbit to be smooth. And for the body of the rabbit I used, I think it was probably about 10 coils of, of clay. Um, you'll be glad to hear that I'm not going to show you um, each of these coils being added because it would make a very long and quite tedious video if I did that. But I thought I would just show you the whole process with at least a few of them and then you just replicate that until you're, you've got a shape that you're happy with. So as you can see there I'm just uh, scoring the clay again with a needle tool and then once it's scored, um, the clay was quite moist so I didn't actually add slip, I just added some water and then ran the needle tool around it again. And then you can press the coil onto the, onto the, um, the clay beneath join the ends well, again scoring, and then compress the clay together and blend it in. And with clay coils what you can do, the, one of the things that's nice about clay coils is you can change the shape of the pot that you're making. So if you want it to widen out, if you're making a sort of a teardrop shaped uh, piece, or as in this, is this case the body, um, the rabbit's body it's sort of an oval shape and the way that you do that is that you just each coil that you add you add it you don't add it immediately on top of the coil beneath you sort of angle it out slightly and it brings the side of the pot outwards and the same is true if you want to bring bring it in if you're closing off the the oval or the circle or the teardrop or whatever you want to call it you just put the the coil um, slightly more to the center rather than immediately on top of the coil beneath. So as you can see there, there I've got quite a few layers of uh, coils there and um, I'm starting to shape the, the body at the front because the, the rabbit's head is going to sit at the narrower end of the, of the oval there. So I don't need the clay wall to go as high up at the front as I do at the back. Um, and just for proportion as I'm building it, I'm, I'm making the neck where the rabbit's neck is going to go a little bit lower down. Just so I can get the shape of the body right. So as you see, I'm sort of... The shape of the, the rabbit's body is, is starting to go inward now just because of the way I'm positioning the coils on the, on the one beneath. And then once it's, once it's blended I'm um, smoothing off the clay with a, a rubber rib. 
And so here you can see I'm just starting to model the rabbit's head. If you're familiar with modelling in clay, then you probably know this already, but for anyone who's new to modelling, the best thing to do if you're modelling something like a head that's got uh, features, uh, facial features like eyes and a nose, it's a good idea to just get the basic shape of the skull right first, spend a bit of time just getting that right. It's really tempting to just go in there and, and start working on details like eyes or a nose, but um, it's a bit like drawing, you have to get the shape of the of the skull and the muscles and the bones uh, you know quite good before you start adding the details. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm just shaping the shaping the rabbit's head before I add any details on. So there's the rabbit's face once I've carved in the features. And at the moment the, the clay head is, is a solid lump of clay so it needs to be carved out uh, to make it um, okay to fire it. If you put a, a solid lump of clay in a kiln and fire it as a solid lump of clay, it's, there's quite a high chance that it, it will crack or even explode in the kiln. It doesn't always do that, but um, you've got a much better chance of it surviving if you hollow it out. So I just cup it gently in my hand so that you don't squash any of the features that you've just carved in. And using a modelling tool, just carve out as much of the content of the, the clay as you can. And I try and make it about the same thickness as the, the coil body, so that's about the width of a pinky finger or a centimetre or half an inch and then once it's once it's thin enough then I just tidy up the edge I'm tidying up the edge of the of the car, of the head there around the neck And I'm just cutting away some of the excess clay there that I don't need around the, the neck area. The best way to do that is to just hold the head up against the body and just see what needs to be cut away. And just cut it away in little pieces. It's much better just to take small amounts away and then check it. And if you need to take more off then you can do that. If you take a lot off and you take too much off then it's going to be a bit of a pain to add the clay back on again, build the clay back up again. So it's much better just to slice off a little bit of a time and, um, you know, just check it as you go along. And then once you've got about the right amount of clay removed, then you can again score it. Score where the head is going to be positioned, both on the neck and on the head itself. Because this clay isn't quite as moist as it was before, I'm, I'm using slip there rather than just water. 
just to give it a bit of extra sticking power. And then you just compress it on as firmly as you can. And you do I do need to, I did need to work quite hard just to make sure that the head was really securely on. So once it's actually positioned in place and the joins are together, you have to kind of get your hand in there and really make sure that the the clay seams are compressed together really well. And actually what I did was I just took a few extra little pieces of clay there, as you can see, and just add them into the seams just to make sure that it's really well attached. And on the outside as well, just add a few very small little coils just to secure the seam and to blend it in as well. And here I'm just adding a bit of clay around the neck area just to make the lip of the, um, the opening to the pot a bit of a nicer shape. And then just tidying it up as I go along. You might be wondering about the ears. The ears are actually going to be attached to the lid of the pot and they're going to be used as a handle for the pot. They're not actually going to be attached to the head. They're just going to look like they're part of the head, but they're going to be attached to the, the lid. So then I'm just tidying up the, um, the edge of the, the lip there with a modeling tool. and smoothing off the clay with a rubber rib. Now that there is a towel in a plastic bag which I am going to put carefully into the rabbit's body. I'm going to put a couple of those in there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm now going to make the lid uh, to fit the pot and I just want the, the towels to support the lid whilst I'm building it. So I'm putting a bit of plastic there, a thin sheet of plastic there, just uh, to stop the clay lid from sticking to the rabbit's body as I'm working on it. So as you can see, the lid is made out of clay coils as well. It's the same, exactly the same principle. You make, the cloy, you make the coils, you slip, slip and score, then blend them together and smooth them, smooth the surface. Slightly out of shot there, but what I'm doing is I'm using the rubber rib just to smooth the inside of the lid 
and then putting it back in position and again smoothing it so that the shape works with the body and it fits flush against the side of the, the body too. These are just two rims that will keep the lid in place once the lid's positioned on the rabbit's back. You could go all the way around with, with the, the rim, but I didn't. It didn't really seem necessary. and I put one on either side. So then once the lid is more or less complete, it's a good idea just to put it back in position, still with the plastic in place whilst the clay is soft and sticky, and just reshape it so that it fits well. And here I'm just tidying it up before I add the the finishing details. And as you can see, really whenever you're adding any piece of clay to another piece that's been already moulded and sitting um, for any length of time, it's just a really good idea to join it really well to stop it from drying and coming off whilst it dries or whilst it's being fired. And I'm just adding texture there to the clay, just as a detail. And here I'm just starting to model the ears. So as you can see that's where the ears are going to be attached to the rabbit, not to the, the rabbit's head because if it was attached to the rabbit's head you wouldn't be able to lift the, the lid off.
So just adding a very tiny little coil in to the side of the ear there just to secure it, make sure it's stuck on there really firmly. I might as well explain in terms of drying the the clay out. What with this, what I did was I you have to be quite care, had to be quite careful with the ears, just because the ears are quite thin um, and they're sta they're a bit like a handle on a mug. Really, you have to kind of wrap them in plastic and keep them covered in plastic for a little while longer than the rest of it, because otherwise they can dry out too quickly and it can cause problems when when it's being fired. So, like with the, the feet actually, um, they are quite small details compared to the bulk of the body, so it's a good idea just to wrap them, keep them covered whilst the rest of the body is, is drying out, so that they dry at a more even rate. And once the body is a little bit dried, then you can uncover the, the details like the ears and the feet, but you have to be a little bit patient and just monitor it whilst it's drying. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up, it really does help, and subscribe to the channel and then you'll get a notification when I upload something new. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it.